that's how she get it. Made a couple racks, I never asked how she did it. City girls out of her fun. What's up? Welcome to Connect with Christina, season two, episode 14. You guys know I bring the best people on the show, right? And this one I've been waiting on, my friend, Rod Smith. What's going on? <laughs> what up, what up, what up? We have a lot to cover, so much I had to write things down, and I never write anything down. You know I'm about to throw you off that whole paper, <laughs> just on purpose. Right, because I never have paper, but today I was like, all right, I got him we're gonna do this but oh. before we even get started like what's new <clears throat> like i just got back two weeks gone trying to catch up but what's how about new um well the lounge 2.0 i guess you could call it uh aka the lounge social house aka soho is officially open uh we just completed our third week uh and it's been absolutely bananas that's the new thing going yeah. on right now and and talking about throwing me off because i wanted to get to that but you guys this Soho number two, right? He did. He could have gotten any building he wanted, okay? But this guy decides he wanted to build this up, like literally, down to epoxy, down to <laughs> paint, down to why? Um, I wanted to put in as much sweat equity into this business as I possibly could, so that way, when I'm ready to build my second, third, and fourth one, I know exactly what it takes. Uh, to build a business and exactly how much it costs. And plus, the first lounge was similar, was like a hole in a wall. Uh, beautiful concept of how the building was made, but everything was just terrible. So we built that one from scratch, too. So this one, I wanted to look and feel as, as exactly how the vibes we were giving for the type of events that we were doing. It's funny you say the hole in the wall, because like just like with food, that's where you find the best. Right. Like, it's just a different energy, different vibe, just... Right. 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 And we and we're not a hole in the wall no more. Now we are a fully functional thirty five hundred square feet building with a patio. Still building onto it too. Uh, still has potential to get bigger. But uh, it's uh, I, I go off everybody's other reactions. It hasn't hit me yet that I own a restaurant bar yet, like an official one. Uh, maybe in a couple months it'll hit me because I'm so <laughs> just dialed in and it hasn't hit yet. But uh, people are coming in there and they're like, oh my god. They were saying, oh, my God, to the last one. And I'm like, this piece of shit ass building. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then <laughs> the new one, they're, like, totally blown away. Uh, you haven't been in there yet, by the way. Yes, I know. I got but, the uh, text message. When are you coming <laughs> in? Uh, but, yeah, it's been a blessing, man. But it, it's been tough. I've been seeing some of the stories where, like, midnight, you're just in there, like, going crazy. 12-hour shifts, With your shifts, beautiful yeah. nurse wife also helping. Yes, friends. man. I, I, I was pulled in 80, 90-hour weeks just to get open on time, um, going through stuff with plumbing, electrical, you think you name it. You know, I went through it in a short period of time because we closed the old lounge December 18th. Um, we opened a new one February 23rd, so literally two and a half months to – Build a building, do construction, get your permits, get your licensing in, and market, and let people know you're at a new location. And people are still going to the old location, like, hey, where's the lounge Where at? Um, but now they're finding out that we literally moved, what, a half a block away around the corner. Yeah, where is it? Like uh, 1457 West Southern Avenue, Suite 107. I always tell people where they're building directly behind the wing stop. That's the best way to pull it. put it. Is that like where Fiesta Mall was? Right behind Fiesta Mall. Fiesta Mall is my backyard. Okay, okay. Yeah. We'll put that up, too. But I'm trying to, like, think about it in my it's, head. It's, it's kind of like uh, you would think it's in the cut, but it's really not. You can see it from Southern. Um, it's a big building. It used so to be a super cellar. easier to find. Yes, a lot easier to find in the old one. Uh, way more parking. Um, and it used to be a super salad, I guess, back in the day. I guess it was, like, a really hot spot. Like, it was, like, the super salad in, in Mesa. The super salad. Like, six, seven years ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, man, it's been it's been crazy well congratulations thank you and um and we'll get into like all the craziness that led into this too but talk about the uh, lounge a little bit more so is it called the lounge it's called the lounge the okay. first one was called the lounge this one is called the lounge social house and i, I i've trended it to be called soho because okay. i i want no matter where you go and people talk about things, I want them to be like Soho. Just, right, just where are you going? Easy. Just go to Soho. I call it a transparent venue. A transparent venue to me is basically it's a place where you have your weekly bar nights, you know, your karaoke, your ladies' nights, and stuff like that. But you're also going to have brunch. You're also going to have dinner parties. You're also going to have events and themed events and birthday parties and uh, fashion shows. You name it, we can do it because I come from the event, concert, festival space. So I'm used to just building something for 
four or five months and doing one event and being out. But now I have something that I build pretty much every day. So, um, and I got a great team that helps me build it too. That's been around me for what almost. 10 years, so our 10 year anniversary this year for BMW coming in September, so that's gonna be crazy. But yeah, man, it's it's been. I'll make fun. sure not to miss that one. Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. That's, and it's my birthday. <laughs> uh, what was your old name when, uh, from the Scotch days? What was it? Let's bring back some memories. Let's go. What is it? Uh, back in the earlier times old town, of Town. Old Town Scotts, when we was promoting that Roxy. Uh, and all those clubs, we used to go by Champagne Roddy because I always was drinking champagne. So if you remember that name, <laughs> I know where you were. <laughs> yeah, it was always bottles of champagne no matter where I go. Like, I wouldn't even get a table. Sometimes i just order a bottle from the bar and just walk around with it. It is be a champagne. <laughs> it was kind of dumb now I think about it now. But I have fun. Uh, I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot about the business, a lot about myself. Uh, and, yeah, just transition. Like, hey, you know, I want to do this for myself instead of for somebody else. Right. And I mean, and everything we go through in life, it really prepares us for what we're meant to do. And you're doing right. it right now. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So I have like 10 businesses in my head that I'm trying to get going. So once the lounge is up and running and moving, I get all my people in place and I can start doing it. And at the same time, I believe and you have to give before you can receive. So my goal in my head is like, I want to create like 10 millionaires. I don't know why. I, uh, High five to that. Right. It should be create myself as a millionaire first would be you would think would be the logical answer, but I don't even think like that. Uh, it's kind of like obviously take care of your family, take care of the people around you, but also nurture them and put them in positions to win. Um, and if you have a gift, use it. You know right. what I'm saying? And right now, as far as networking, building businesses, and I'm being absolutely sickening with work ethic <laughs> uh, right now is the wave I'm on and uh it's hard to stay on it like once you start going up you know I mean you can uh, attend to this is when you start doing good things for other people other people start coming other people and all these ideas and op opportunities just start getting thrown at you but you can't get off your wave you got to stay on it like, yeah I got you let's get it and you have to like organize your life and that's the hardest thing right organize now organize your life guys yeah. This is extremely <laughs> difficult. I didn't eat yesterday, like, at all. And uh, by the way, how many kids do you have? Oh, my God. Uh, I have five kids, 18, 10, 6, 4, and then my baby boy, he'll be one next month. So five children, uh, beautiful wife, um, and uh, we're fitness freaks, travel world travelers. We're Our life is, like, insane. Like, people say, we don't know how y'all do it. I was like, we don't know either. We just wake up every day and show up. And she's a, a nurse, one of the top nurses in Arizona. She's been on the front lines of COVID. She works nights. She travels. She's she's an amazing human being. So she's already got her own thing, craziness going on, uh, which we're looking to build her gym next, the pit. Um, her specialty is training women. Especially. She'll be on here soon. Right. Her specialty she's, is she's training. She's beautiful inside yeah, and out. She's home. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, she's, her specialty is training women who've had kids. Because she's had five kids. And right. And I was like, oh, my God, how, you've had five kids that don't believe her. It's her snapback. Her, it's really her discipline. So that's her niche. And I love training children because I train mine and some other people's kids. I've had camps before. So that's kind of like our thing that we really love to do. And knowing you, that's going to transition to, like, preparing pe kids to sports, too. Right. Uh, nothing specific. I don't want to be a coach. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just about uh, really it just came down to performance training and getting kids to focus. Because right now, due to social media, video games, covid yeah. Our children are, they hate being outside. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me go back to what I want to talk about. As you can see, this is why this man is successful. You know, you're, you're not just disciplined, but like your dedication, you know. Super. Not, not just to, to like say the project or yourself or your family, like the people around you. You know, we had DJ Jamar here. That's and my guy. Had like the biggest shout out. That's from my here, guy. You know, so anyway, but to Soho. Right? Like, right. why Mesa? Because Mesa needs it. So I had to ask, why? <laughs> if you would have asked me, like, 10 years ago, like, Rod, do you want to build a lounge club? Anything. You know, Mesa would have never been on the list. Uh, it would have been. <laughs> uh, really, the opportunity presented itself. I, did, I, I was actually helping somebody else get a business in the same building for the first lounge. Mm hmm they had suggested, hey, go upstairs. You should check it out. It might be a good spot for you. And I'm like, nah, I don't want, I don't want to do the everyday business. It's too much. You know, it was too much. I did a walkthrough. Um, I saw the vision. Um, I asked the wife, and she was like, are you sure? 
Like, are you sure you're sure? Because you always know, have to ask the yeah, why. Yeah, she was like, well, you know, because I know you. Once you commit, you're going to commit for real. Um, and it was a really good decision. We um, we crushed all our numbers. We crushed a lot of expectations. We had people driving from Avondale, uh, Paradise Valley, North North Scottsdale coming to the lounge. Yeah. Everywhere, just Tucson. Um, people flying in from out of town just to, to get that environment because it doesn't – we don't have too many spots like – the lounge in Arizona. So I think it was a necessity just for the culture out here, a necessity for entertainment, and a necessity just for my company and my team to be able to be creative every week. Like, everybody has input. Uh, obviously, I execute most of it, but uh, it just gives us the ability to do what we want, when we want, how we want to do it, and be customer-centric. Um, I always tell people, uh, when I was young growing up, my dad, he would take me to these hole-in-the-wall dive bars, and as soon as he walked through the door, hey, Mr. Smith or Smitty, you know what I'm saying? They all knew his name. Now there's very few clubs where you walk in with a hostess or somebody remembers you or gives you a hug or acknowledges you. Yeah. Um, and if you ask anybody, if you've been to the old lounge and we've had a conversation and I know you and I rock with you and I've seen you multiple times, whenever I see you, I give you a hug. Uh, there's, a, there's a group of women that have been coming to our karaoke for like a year. I see them all the time um, and I always give them a hug. I right. always show them love. I call them A1s. Um, same thing with fellas. If I see you, I just show love. Um, and I think that's a different. Yeah, it's just definitely a different energy. Like, if you get it, you understand. You, right. It doesn't matter the physical integrity of the building, although the new one is, like, like super nice. Right. But I think it's that, just the vibe and the feeling and the energy. Like, if, especially if you like music. Like, right. If you, love, if you love music, if you love energy, uh, I'm really big on vibrations, energy, and, uh, you know, chakras, if that's what you want to call it. But I think it starts from top down when it comes to organization and the people so if the owner is always energetic and loving and caring um then it it it, it follows suit through your people and i think that's my biggest congratulations to you or and other people that really are entrepreneurs because yeah you provide for your family but you're now also providing for people the food on their table Uh, roof over the head that was the scariest thing this last year i was like oh shit um you know, if, if I don't do my thing, then this person, their paycheck is this or their, their tips are this and, you know, they can't do their thing. And then when we closed, I really felt that I had people texting me like, oh, so how long before the social house open? When you, I'm like, I'm going through this and going through I'm like, well, I'm going through that too. Right. <laughs> uh, but now it's blessing. I got 19 employees, like five more to go. Um, yeah, like I said, it's insane. And, well, and so about the Mesa thing, like everyone knows – I don't, I don't want to age us, but do you remember, I forget the name of it, but there was a club in Tempe, and it was like a mix, country, it was hip-hop, it was rock, it was like, uh, um, they even had the buffalo in there. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, in Tucson, there was a place called A Little Bit of Country, but this one is something else. Do you remember? Anyway, uh, it's closed. We're gonna, it's gonna it's come called Moonshine? To us. No, it's going to come to us. But my point is there is nothing in Mesa. <laughs> right? Like downtown Mesa, I have a lot of friends and other entrepreneurs that have always looked at downtown. Like, right. why? Like, you got downtown Gilbert. Downtown you, Gilbert you got, is doing well. Right? So why? But there's there's question, there's answers to that I don't wish to talk about today. <laughs> I wanted to stay close to the freeway. My goal was to be accessible so that way uh, downtown Mesa is, is amazing, but it's still, once you get off the freeway, you still got like a little bit of ways to go and to get in there. And parking's a hassle. Right. So when, you know, the opportunity presented itself to even get the spot I got now, which is which is crazy because I was looking at it for a while and I couldn't get a hold of nobody. Um, and then I, this, uh, the neighbor saw me looking in the window like, hey, you know, you need the info and they gave it to me and I end up talking to the property management that day and probably signed a contract within the next three days. Um, and it was just based off vibe. Like I kept seeing it. I kept watching it. I kind of manifested it, which I'm really big on manifest manifestation. I'm, I'm huge on that. Um, just speaking into existence and I kept doing it, kept doing it. And it was, you know, sign the paperwork. Let's get it. So now your, uh, your house drink is what? My house drink. <laughs> uh, so uh, I am. Uh, I'm one of those people. Like, I, I like different things. I like think things to wow people. Like, I want. I don't want to go. If I want to go to Applebee's for two for twenty, I go to Applebee's two for twenty. You know what I'm saying? Um, for Soho, I want it to be that place where you get certain things you don't necessarily get somewhere else, so, unless until they copy me. So uh, when I go to Florida all the time and I travel, you know, I always want these big, massive drinks. I don't ever drink them all because I don't really drink like that. But these big cups, some, something unique. So we developed uh, Soho Instagram fish bowls. Instagram worthy. Right. 
clickbait. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted these drinks that bring women in because my goal is if, if the women come, the guys going to come. But also, you got to take care of your ladies. Obviously, some of my best friends, some of my little, most, of, most of the people around me are ladies. I got very few men around me uh, that I trust and I rock my circles really, really small. But I have a lot of women that I attribute my success to and I feed off of my wife being obviously the main one. Um, and I just wanted, hey, boo, what would we get you and your girls to come to this place that you've never been before? You don't know what the vibe's like. Maybe you don't know the host or the DJ, not similar to like a downtown Phoenix or a Scottsdale where they've been doing these clubs for decades and you know what it is. Like, how do I draw traffic? And she was like, it's all about the drinks, babe. Uh, um, so we developed, I told my bartenders, I challenged them, like, hey, I need four different drinks to bring women in. And they got all excited. So we were, Name them. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, so we have the Phoenix Sun, which is like a tequila fishbowl. Um, we have like the Blue Chill, which is a Ciroc and Blue Carousel fishbowl. And um, we have a Hennessy Long Island fishbowl, which is nuts. Uh, people really love that. We got a Hennessy and Lemonade. Um, and then I just came out with, uh, I guess Mimosa Flights has been really popular over the last couple. Brunches, obviously day parties and brunches are killing the world right now. But uh, I was like, well... I want to do something different. Like, I, I, I don't, because I, I, I'm a champagne roddy. Uh, <laughs> those three little flights, they don't do nothing for me. Give me my, give me my emotions. Instead of going back and forth, you know, it's COVID still. It's still a real thing. So that passing out um, and pouring, I didn't really like it. It's like, so how can I change it? So I found these big old beer towers. So I was like, hey, we're doing mimosa towers. And everybody looked at me funny, like, what are you talking about? So I ordered these big old three liter towers, like, boom. <laughs> Give them the most, give them different flavors. We have Soho Raz. Uh, we have Rum Punch uh, Mimosas. Uh, we have a Passion Fruit Mimosa. And we have regulars. And now you just buy the tower. We just put it on your table where you're sitting at. You just sit there and you just pour it when you're ready to go. <laughs> Dangerous. Uh, mind you, everybody is really, really still intoxicated from yesterday. I hope everybody's safe. It was our first <laughs> Sunday, Soho on Sundays, uh, R&B day party yesterday, which was a blast. Like, it was really cool to see that. Well, I can't wait to come through for for the music, the environment, but also to support you, obviously. But I'm going to say you have a new drink coming your way. You don't oh. even know. It's called the Cloud God drink. <laughs> and it's going to be a combination of champagne and vodka. Ooh. But I'm not going to disclose the base. But the base is going to be this big jug with a little spout, and that's going to be your Cloud God drink. That could be dope. Yeah. So, so it's With only vodka, for with champagne best. in it? Ooh. Yeah. You know. Um, however... Do tell us who your vodka, your media, <laughs> I mean. I shout out to Wes, CEO. Uh, shout out to Miss Christina and Shooter, obviously. Uh, City Vodka is my premier, my sponsored vodka, and it's been that forever. <laughs> I don't know that. I've been rocking with, I've been rocking with Wes for years, um, just mutually. Uh, I just, I just respect him. I love his grind and his hustle. And obviously, you energies react to other people's energies. Like when people start. Like me and you when we met, I was like, I don't know you, but I fuck with you. I, I, you know what I'm saying? It took, and then after just seeing you and vibing with you and then talking, and it was like, oh, well, yeah. Well, Wes was like, you got to meet this guy. And then he told me, he told you, you got to meet this girl. Right. So, and then I meet your wife. I'm like, oh, you're, we're done. You're right. It's, it's a Filipino connection. It's real, you know, if you know any real Filipinos. But no, that, it, it was just a mutual connection with him. And I was like, hey, I support. Uh, and. You see, and, he, and anything I do, he supports. There's no questions asked. He's like, what you need? And I'm like, what do you need? And City Vodka is really good. It's a great mixture. It's a great price. Uh, it's packaged well. It's sexy. Uh, people are asking for some flavors, by the way. I don't know what y'all got it's going on. It's a machine on. problem. Oh, we don't want yeah. that sugar. I feel it, Eventually, but then they're asking for it. we're manifesting that. Right. Yeah, um, so manifesting. Roddy Special Edition. Yeah. Lady Vodka. Uh, <laughs> champagne Rock. Or Champagne, too. I'd be, I'd be with it. Uh, that might be the next. That's in the back of my head. I talked to Wes about that, too. He said we, we yeah. look into it. But no, nah, shout out to City Vodka. Yeah, it can uh, be done. But honestly, I just want to thank you, like, on here for real. Like, I see how you support us. You don't have to, right. but you do it. And you support a lot of other people, too. And I just want to, like, tell you thank you for that. No, oh, you're welcome. Yeah. I, I, I'm really big. Like, if you have good energy and your product's dope and you're dope, I'm with it. Uh, I don't need any applause or pats on the back. I'm really not big on um, a comment, like, a, applauding myself, I, um, which... Which what really makes you a better person, in my opinion. We were talking about that. Like, I will plug everyone's podcast, but yeah. you never see me 
plug my own. It's hard. Like, right. I, and, and, you know, but then now we're like, okay, you know what? Because the idea of this podcast is it's not about me. It's about me highlighting people like you and tell your story, right? right. And leave your mark. And when I change that in my head, I'm like, okay, fine. Then I can, it's allowing me to go, yeah, follow me, <laughs> follow, you know what I'm saying? And that's new, new for me. Cause we're going to start to like focus on that and grow yeah, it. Yeah. You got a brand. Um, you know, but I understand that sentiment because I'm the same way. Like we're, we want to push everyone else and we feel a little right. funny about ourselves, but yeah. Why? Because I'm like, well, we'll have artists and hosts come through and I, I mean, I'm not big on taking pictures with them or doing anything like, cause I, you know, I hired them. They're here. They're here for the people, not here for me. So I'm just working. I'm a worker. I have a work problem. Uh, I'm learning how to <laughs> delegate right now. My team is like, Hey, you know, Rod should be doing this, this, and it's not everything. So right. Um, I got a great team around me right now. Like I said, we're still growing. We're still learning. Um, we're doing it. We have a, our wording is the Soho way. I'm going to be like nobody else. Um, so. Well, I'm going to make, I'm going to flood the inter, the interweb with this podcast because a lot of people still don't know about Soho. Right. And it's going to be a thing when they find out like what it's in Mesa. We don't have anything. We, the crazy Mesa. part is we're getting a lot of people from out of town. Yeah. Well, uh, I heard Tucson because I have yeah. people in Tucson that, that come up here. For a that. lot of people from out of town are like hitting us up like, hey, we're here visiting. We don't really know where to go. I, I don't even know how Soho came up first because there's a million other places to go. But I, I think word of mouth and vibe like in like I said, it comes down to the environment and energy you give. And we give off such great energy. Me and my team, like we've done adult proms, we've done urban splash, we've done all like we've done every genre of events. So I just think that we don't have really a a bias towards anything. You know, there are a lot of people that are are coming from Tucson. So I was gonna tell you, like, figure out a relationship with like a close by hotel because mm -hmm. they're coming in buses. <sighs> You're and right. we want them <laughs> safe. We want them safe. You're right. No, yeah. absolutely. Um, I do need to figure that out. I yeah. didn't even There's that. a girl named Olivia and Angela from Tucson. They're going to watch this. And trust me, when they come, they come with like 20 women. Oh, y'all need to hit me ASAP yeah. so yeah. that way we can configure. Like we have uh, we have stage sections now. So I actually put sections on the stage so you're on both sides of the VIP booth. And those are like our birthday sections or our big group sections. They fit like 10 to 12. And those sections have been popping for like three weeks. People love them. I know we're coming t uh, close to our time, and I knew this was going to happen because I still have a lot of She's questions for you. She's not even halfway through her paper, huh? I know. Not even <laughs> at all. But so we established where Soho has. I want to see everyone out there. Um, but I can't let you go without asking a couple things. Number one, this look that you always do, like, in pictures, <laughs> where did that come from? Roddy, salute. Um, I hate taking pictures, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I, and I, you're I, married to a Filipino? Well, and she's a published model, so and she loves it. It's annoying. Um, <laughs> I've taken more pictures with her since we've been together than I've ever taken my entire life. Um, it's just a salute. Um, it's, I guess it's my signature pose. It is. Um, but I also wanted, uh, when I was doing promotion, I wanted my picture to stand out. Like, how do you know it was Rod? Um, or how do you know I was there? And you wanted, I like, everybody was like, all right, I do my salute, you know. Uh, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's funny, I get my kids to do it too, and they take pictures. And I always sticking my tongue out and closing my eyes. If you see me, I always use a, a tongue out, closed eyes emoji. That's like my thing too. On our, uh, when we do our exit, you got to do it. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, that was just my way of just taking <laughs> pictures and then it just stuck. Uh, you'll see, you'll see. Now you're going to recognize <laughs> it. It just stuck. It's been my thing forever. Like I just, I just, uh, I guess it's branding. I guess it'll be a part of my brand, of course. I need the silhouette of that. You do, um, actually. My wife, actually, she uh, she does pop art. She did all the paintings in the lounge. You got to see the new one. She's done like 10 more. Oh, she's working coming. on She's killing it. Um, she did one of me doing that pose. It's in my house. It's awesome. Yeah. I heard Eric Bernal's coming through you. Yes. Uh, we have a comedy show with T-Rail coming uh, next month, and he's hosting. So it's going to be crazy. So, because I have to finish this thing, I can't let you go. It took me forever to let you go, to let you come, to uh, have you come on board. So, the why. I mean, you kind of covered a little bit earlier of who you are and stuff, but like the why. Like, what is your why? Because you're an extraordinary person. Why? Extraordinary person? No. <laughs> <Excuse> <laughs> Nothing me. extraordinary about me at all. Um, the why. Um, I got a couple, I got two major whys. Obviously, uh, I always tell people I got five five reasons to kill you. Obviously, that's my five children. 
um, and then I <laughs> and I have my wife like that. That cornerstone, those people, their smiles, everything I do, everything I encompass, anything, any success is just for them <coughs> to have a better life than I did. Um, I didn't have a terrible life. I didn't. I, mean, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. Nothing. We had our trials and tribulations. Like, but I come from a really rough situation um, where we didn't get the chance to do the family things. Well, I'm gonna have you come on board for that. Come back for that because that's a whole thing, and you can help a lot of people. But I feel like everything you do is like intentional. Oh, absolutely. I don't do anything. I do everything with purpose. I don't play no games. Um, but for me, it's kind of like. Uh, I I have this I've, I've had these words through playing football and sports and in business and working for other people and people always wanting me to conform confirm conform or they'll say you have the the potential so potential and conform are the, like I hate those words so I was like I wanted to create something that I pick up when I want the options to do what I want when I want with whoever I want that's really those those are my words that sounds like Christina that sounds <laughs> like a Christina problem I just I just show a lot of love man I give you what you give me. Right. Now, I can go left if you want to go left, but <laughs> uh, when it comes to business, I'm really big on integrity. Uh, whether we make a dollar or, or make a million dollars, um, you know, I, I want it all to be the same when it comes to me. So there's some things I won't invest in, some people I won't deal with um, if it goes, goes to those certain things because my energy is everything. Right. Fine. So don't shout out a mentor you didn't have. <laughs> shout out, I call him my DJ. I, sorry. I know it's he's your DJ, but he's my DJ. So shout out DJ Jamar. Oh, please. man. I, absolutely. I mean, I, I got people I can shout out. Definitely. Uh, shout out DJ Jamar. That's my guy. Tucson, Prince of Tucson. He might be the like grandpa of Tucson now, but he's <laughs> definitely been moving and shaking out there. Um, I got to shout out Ron. Uh, I call him my non yes man. He's been around me forever doing things. Uh, Toy, uh, love you to death. Uh, uh, Erica Mendeville, she helped start BMW back in the day. Um, the whole team, um, to be honest, my boy, my brother Jordan, man, he's he's been with me at five in the morning working, just getting off. Um, like I like I said, I got a lot of people I got to show love to. The current Soho team, everybody. Um, I can go off name for name, but that's gonna be a lot. Um, <laughs> my brother Sarge will put me on Mocha Fest, learning everything like that. Um, and you know, my dad, my mom, uh, even my brother show some love. Like I learn from everybody. You know, you have to take a little bit from everybody and just curate it into your own sense and then be you. Um, but uh, I, everybody's had like been around me has had some type of motivation or impact, and I just take that energy and just. Well, go. and I think you're like the example for me where you'll relate to this a lot of times when you're you know you made it or you're successful or you're on the way there sometimes people will say like you're so lucky <laughs> like it's not luck you guys Man, it's no. hard work Fuck it's the no. after hours it's the early hours it's you being on your knees like like how right. you did your own epoxy like right you know yeah. they don't <laughs> see that though <laughs> Luck is when you find money in your in, in, in your, in your uh, clothes from the dryer. That's called lucky. Uh, yeah, I'm not lucky at all. I, I just I call it showing up. You got to show up. Um, it's it is it's hard. It's like being an entrepreneur is definitely the hardest thing I think that ever is because there's that fear of failing and you have people that you're responsible for, and it's devastating if you lose. Um, and I think to be an entrepreneur, you got to learn how to die over and over and over until that one time you just don't die. You You're going to have to, uh, <laughs> you got to like caption that one. <laughs> we are so out of time. It's but, all good. But so uh, I asked uh, your beautiful wife, uh -oh. my sister from another mother, and she want to, I wanted her to say something to you. Oh, so God. I can like put it something. This is like a permanent uh, video, y'all. This, this is anything, personal. Anything happens to us, you know, like. I thought this was a business <laughs> podcast. It's all personal. So your beautiful wife just wanted me to uh, say to you, to my person, my husband, the father of our beautiful children, and the male version of me, I only wish everyone could see what I see. The behind the scenes, the late nights and early mornings and the quality time still spent on minimal sleep. We just want to let you know we are so proud of you. We love you. And most of all, we got you forever and a day from four corners to the moon. You yeah. know what the four corners <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> I can't believe she did that. Y'all being sneaky. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> You know, I'm the non-emotional, sensitive guy, so I'm going to cry in the car. Uh, <laughs> nice playing. Um, yeah, man, that woman. Yeah, man. Um, I, 
like I said, I told her I'd take her around and give her the world, and I'm still working on it. Um, but yeah, she just she pulled it all together, pulled me together when I was like all over the place. So she's the curator of Rod Smith, current the current Rod Smith, <laughs> the better <laughs> version of Rod Smith. Um, yeah, that's tough. She's definitely the one. Uh, my business didn't even take off. Can you guys get remarried so I can be part of it? <laughs> honestly, we haven't even been on a honeymoon. We were pregnant on a honeymoon, so we haven't. I still owe her. I still owe her. I, like I owe her a bunch of stuff. I don't want to get get to it. I don't want to <laughs> say it on camera. <laughs> you guys need to get familiar with this face on this show, cause let me tell you, we didn't even get to talk about Urban Splash, Mocha. Like it's just it's crazazy BMW. Like there's right. just so much. But I want to thank you for coming on to. Thank you. To the show, I want everyone, not just Mesa, but especially Mesa, come out to Soho. Like, we'll put uh, the directions, the whatever you need. Pull but up. We want to see you there. You will see C City Vodka there, and you'll see my banner there. Cause Digitally. We're going yeah, to do digital yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I want that copy of the old one because, like, people got gave me mad love for that. So, thank you. Oh, yeah. If you need that plug, you can let me know. He was dope. Yeah, yeah. So... Guys, thank you for spending your time here. Connect with Christina and uh, Rod Smith. Hey, shout out to Christina, man. This is amazing. This is a dope little <laughs> setup. I've done some podcasts before, and it wasn't like this. Uh, this is amazing. Like, you got to understand, you gotta also got to pat yourself on the back for giving people the opportunity to have a voice. Uh, your platform is obviously growing and growing. I'm and still growing. learning. You got sponsors I'm, now. I'm with you. So you I'm, did you sponsor? You didn't. You didn't that. do your sponsor. I was gonna to, do it separate. Oh, it's my bad. But, I didn't know. But I'm still learning <laughs> that. What you just said, like I'm learning that alongside you to be okay with like taking that pat on the back. You know. Yeah, you got to tell it. I, I usually um, here's what I do. Silently. So after every event, after anything I do that's semi, like I feel good about it, I go and I have a 16 ounce of blue uh, of uh, blue moon and a double shot of whiskey. And I just <laughs> sit, but it, but it takes me like two hours to drink it, and I just kind of like sit in this kind of like by myself that's and the just Rod chill. Smith recipe. <laughs> I call it a victory lap. It's just you just gotta sit and just be in a moment because I'm never in the moment. Never. So that that victory, uh, what do you call I it? I call it a victory lap. Okay, so that victory lap combined with the Pity Party song <laughs> album. I mean, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, nah, no pity. Okay, so let me, well, you know, see, I told you I can't let him go. But you know, I learned that too, the Pity Party like album. Like my friend taught me that. She's really? a comedian and it's Lexi. And she taught me because, you know, I'm still like dealing with my mom's grief. Like me, I haven't grieved her. And I know I keep saying I'm going to try. I'm going to try. We this have, is, we have this something coming. Same thing. Right? I this haven't is, grieved my mother yet either. This is the year. But like, so my friend comes through and tells me like, no, you need a Pity Party album where you're going to get into yourself and your feelings and you're going to allow yourself to cry but guess what you're going to snap out of it and you're going to move forward but it's healthy and she's right Oof. so uh. when you're ready i'll <laughs> send you the album <laughs> i feel like you need to hike the mountain to like listen in but like i it's a healthy way to like deal with things that may have happened to us you know yes absolutely correct but and my mother passed like six months ago i still haven't grieved um, and, I'm so sorry. You know, I know your pain. And um, just through well, this, I learned this at a really long age. This is why I, I call myself unique. Is because uh, through really through pain, I was able to funnel it into a fuel, and that's what actually fueled me through college, fueled me through entrepreneurship. And I took that hate, all that ugly stuff, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use that as motivation to prove these people wrong or or, or, or come out on top. Um, so when me and my mother finally did get the chance to kind of like fix it, I didn't want to fix it because I had turned it into such an energy for me that got me through so many things. And then she passed before we had the chance to have the, the opportunity to fix it. And this might sound wrong, but I felt like that was also her way of allowing me to keep the energy and still you know what I'm saying? Like Mothers personal. Are Does that sound weird? No, I guess that it's might, not weird. Does that sound weird? It's like, not weird. Like we didn't get to have that moment. Everybody's like, you need to talk to your mother. Like, you know, have that moment with her. Forgive her. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Virgo. I don't. No, I hold grudges. He's coming back <laughs> to the show when I'm ready to talk about my mom. Yeah, and uh, so we never had me and my mom. Did, and then by the time you know she couldn't, she didn't really remember me or be able to talk to me. So we never had that moment uh, for me to forgive her. And in my head, I turned it as, damn, that was her way of 
still I letting me you have still. it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? That sounds yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> There's something about moms, you know? So I guess we should end the show properly, but hold yeah, up. Right I'm, I'm here. On high side. Right here, my sponsor. Uh, have you been here? I oh, have not. So Buddha's Ritual is a dope restaurant in Scottsdale, and it's our boy, Joey Boy, from 105. Oh, dope. It's his, so come out, support him. Like, it's actually really good. Make sure you ask for the, the crazy um, mac and cheese. I know it sounds simple, but he, like, did something to it. So thank you, B Buddha's Ritual. And, again, the proper way of saying goodbye, remember that. Thank you for being here at Connect with Christina. AKA the Cloud God. <laughs>